A person that asks with wavering will not receive from God. Amen. Amen. When you ask from God, you need to believe in your heart. When you ask from God, you need to ask in faith. Amen. Amen. I, I was advised that the time I have is so little, so there's a, there's a first part that I want to talk about. I wanted to talk about wisdom, but maybe the only thing I'll just do on wisdom is that I'll just give us a generic definition of what wisdom is. Wisdom is the ability to correctly apply knowledge. Is it? Mm -hmm. The ability to correctly apply knowledge. People have knowledge. People know that praying is good, isn't it? Yeah. But it's not everybody who prays, but they know that praying is good. But they lack the wisdom to actually do it. Amen. Mm -hmm. People know that going to church is good, but it's not everybody who goes to church. Why? Because they lack the wisdom to actually do it. People, there are certain things that you know, but you don't have the ability to apply those things. So nevertheless, the Bible says that if anyone lacks wisdom, you have knowledge already, knowledge is not a problem, but if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God, let him ask God for he's the one that gives. Amen. Amen. So I'm not going to talk more on the lack of wisdom, but I'm going to talk on unbelief. Amen. Amen. Remember the scripture is very clear, it says, if you ask God, you need to ask him in faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. When you ask God, you need to ask Him in faith. So we need to understand what exactly is faith. If you take time to analyze what faith is, you realize that from the Greek understanding, it comes from the word pistis. And the word pistis, what it, thinks, what it speaks about, it speaks about um, the exercise, or rather it speaks about the confidence, trust, and fair persuasion. Amen. Mm -hmm. When a person has faith, what they have is they have trust, and they have confidence and they are firmly persuaded in the person who would have spoken to them. Amen. That, that simply means that the person has got faith. So when you're, asking in, when you're asking and you're asking in faith, as the scripture told us, that when you ask God, you need to ask him in faith. You are, you are persuaded. When a person is persuaded, they can't be moved. They can't be shaken. Amen. They trust in him completely that he who promised is able, is capable. Amen. So one thing that I can say about unbelief now, unbelief is the lack of confidence. It is the failure to trust that he who promised is able to deliver that which he has promised. That's what unbelief is. Amen. It is the failure to believe that he who promised is able to fulfill his promises. And now we need to understand that without faith, it is impossible to please it is impossible to please God. If you don't have faith, it is impossible to please God. And faith without works is dead. <coughs> Where does the work element to faith come in? When a person exercises the faith. Amen. Amen. You have received, because, check this out, the Bible is very clear. The Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Amen. You have heard God's word. The word of God has been ministered. The word of God has been spoken. There is confidence that has been created on the inside of you. You're confident. You're persuaded. But if you just leave it as confidence, and if you don't exercise that confidence, if you don't act out of that confidence, it is just as good as dead. Amen. It is just as good as dead. You know, you can, you can be hyped and have all this confidence, but if you don't use it, it will die. Amen. Amen. There's this statement from John Maxwell, often repeated by the later post to Charles Sirisir, where he says, if something is not growing, it is dying. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. If your faith is not growing, it is dying. Mm -hmm. And how do you grow that faith? You grow the faith by exercising that faith. Amen. Amen. And you being teachers, I'm sure you, there's, there's, all, there's plenty of opportunity <laughs> to exercise faith. Amen. Amen. There's plenty of opportunities to exercise faith. It could be a child in your classroom who's not behaving so well. Instead of being angry, God can give you wisdom on how to deal with it. And when God gives you that wisdom, you, 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 you function and operate on that wisdom, you grow your faith. Amen. Amen. Small little things, small little things, exercise of faith. I would like to believe that you guys have an opportunity to exercise faith every day. Amen. One thing when I look at teachers, what I see is I see people that have been entrusted with lives. I see stewards. <laughs> see, these lives are God's lives. But nevertheless, God has entrusted you with his lives. And God wants you to exercise faith. 
Amen. Amen. God wants you to exercise faith in your classrooms. Amen. Amen. Exercise faith with, 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 all the, with, with all the school kids. Amen. Amen. Exercise faith. Amen. Amen. Why? Why should we exercise faith? It's simply because faith is the spiritual medium of exchange. Without faith, you cannot transact in the realms of the Spirit. Without it, you can't transact in the realms of the Spirit. You can't. When we look into the Bible, we realize that there's a, there's a story of a man by the name of Abraham. The man needed to exercise faith. Amen. I don't know what situation you're going through in your life. I don't know how hard and how difficult the situations in your life might be. Because you also have personal lives, and as much as you have, you have been given, you, you, you have been given stewardship over these children. But nevertheless, you also have personal lives, and you, you have issues and stuff that you go through in your own personal life, and you need to exercise faith in your own personal lives. Amen. Amen. You need to exercise faith in your own personal life, and Abraham is one, one good example. Amen. Amen. Abraham had reached a place where there was no hope, but he hoped against hope. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans that he staggered not upon the promises of God. Amen. He staggered not upon the promises of God. And I'm speaking to somebody and I'm saying, God has is, God is spoken. When you look into the Bible, the Bible is full of promises. God has made a promise to each and every one of us. <laughs> in one way or the other, God has made a promise. And guess what? You have to stagger not upon the promises of God. Just like Abraham. Stagger not upon the promises of God. For this man, there was no hope. There was no hope. His wife had reached monopause. There was no turning back. There was no hope that his wife would give birth. There was no hope that he could get that thing. He said, I don't know, I don't know what situation you are in in your own personal life. I don't know exactly what is happening in your life. It could be, it, it could be the financial situation in our country that is, that is tying you down so hard. It, you, you probably have so many responsibilities that you just don't know how to work it out. You probably have a child who's overseas and you just don't know how to wake it up. They need to pay rent. And you need, they need food. You just don't know how to wake it out. But you just have to be stayed first. You just have to be grounded. You just have to believe. You just have to believe. Somebody needs to time me, amen. 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 You, just have, you just have to believe. Amen. Amen. You just have to believe. <coughs> Struggle not upon the promises of God. And so now, what I can simply say in closing is that unbelief is the byproduct of a life without much of God's word. The reason why people would suffer from unbelief, I would like to diagnose it as a disease, it is simply because of the lack of God's word. So what I've done is I've diagnosed and I've also given you a prescription. And the prescription is read God's word. Amen. 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 If you want to have faith, you need to read God's word. That's the secret. Without God's word, you can't. There's nothing to be confident about. You see, I wonder how people go through life without Jesus. I wonder every day when I wake up, I wonder how do they go through life without Christ? How is it possible? Because I tried it for some time and I discovered it was unbearable. You can't be in this life on your own. You can't. It's impossible. Imagine all those weights coming on you and how wonderful Jesus is. Jesus Christ tells us, cast all your cares on me for I care. Yes. Amen. 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 Cast all your cares on Jesus. Just imagine there's no need for me to be worried anymore. Why? Because I've cast all my cares on Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ comes on the scene and he says, put your burdens on me. Put your burdens on me. And, and when you put your burdens on me, I've got something for you, and it's a lighter job. Amen. Amen. And this lighter job, he even promises that he, we will do it by his grace. In other words, it's simply saying, you're not going to do it on your own. I'm going to empower you to do it. Amen. Just imagine, we are the heavy Lord. We have a big job that we were trying to do all by ourselves. And he says, give me that big job and I'll take care of that. <laughs> but nevertheless, I'm going to give you a small job. But in this small job, you are not the one who's going to do it anyway. I'm the one who's going to empower you to do it. Amen. Amen. I just wonder how people go through life without Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just don't know how people go through life without Jesus. 
So on this particular night, I'd like to believe that I've, I've shared just about everything that we needed to share in the short space of time. Amen. Amen. And this should, this should at least power us up to go through life and be able to touch lives and be the people that God has created us to be. Amen. Amen. Uh, I just want to state that I love you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mr. Chifamba. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Uh, Simango. Uh, God bless all of us. Uh, I'm just going to kindly ask us to stand because I'd like to pray. Father God, in the mighty and holy name of Jesus, I take this opportunity to pray for your children. I commit them into your hands. I surrender them into your hands. I speak your mercies and your love and kindness over their lives. I pray that their lives will never be the same ever again. In the mighty and holy name of Jesus, Father God, I pray that you continue to minister to them, continue to speak to them. I pray that they may guard their hearts and guard their hearts with all diligence because out of the <coughs> issues of life. I pray that I pray that they be the people that you've called them to be and that they may raise the champions that you've created them to raise. These are stewards. These are people that you have given responsibility over, your, over the nation in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. These are the people that are going to raise the next generation, raise the next leaders. These are the people that are going to impact not, on, not only their community, but they're going to impact the globe. They're going to impact the world, but they're going to do it from their classrooms in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. I pray for significance. I pray for influence, my God. I pray that you may help them to grow faith and to, to, to grow belief in their own personal lives. In Jesus' mighty and holy name, Father God, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.